we often hear in spiritual circles phrases such as um, I am one with everything I, I am one with the trees I, and it, it's legitimate to say such things that, that it's not completely accurate but it's legitimate uh, uh, as an attempt to express one's experience but what very often happens when we hear something like that is that we then think, oh, wow, that person is one with everything, one with all these things, one with nature, one with the trees. That's something I'd like to be. So there's the, there's the tree over there. And, and to be honest, we don't feel one with it. But but we want to somehow uh, somehow practice something that can make us feel one with it and th th this is the wrong approach it's an approach that doesn't work it's an approach that leads to frustration because once we have conceptualized everything that is all things trees or people or t once we have once we think and more importantly feel that what we are experiencing are things right. a thing a tree or everything we are by definition the separate subject right. of those separate things or objects right. it is not possible for that separate subject to unite with the separate object so this is a it's a it's a very common kind of misunderstanding on the on the new age scene including the new age non duality scene the feeling of being one with with all things it's not possible as long as they are things it's not possible to be one with them because things or objects are defined by my being a separate subject that knows them That is why Krishna Menon so clearly and cleanly diagnosed the the phrase "consciousness is all" as being not quite not far enough. It's not the end. Consciousness is all, or consciousness is everything. As long as there's an all or an everything, there is objectivity and consciousness is the subject of that right so there is still another step to take which is to reduce the all the everything or the things into pure consciousness but bear with me so when you're outside as you were yesterday in, in nature or indeed <laughs> with any object or in instead of seeing the object and somehow wanting wanting to be one with it you have to reduce the object into yourself so that it no longer stands as an object either to be one with or to be separate from and the way to do that is is to in relation to visual perception in, because in your case you were looking at a tree is to start first of all with the conventional conceptualization it is a tree, it is an object, and, and the fine print, the subtext of that statement, it is a tree, is I am a self. So, in order to collapse this distinction between the, the self, the subject, and the tree, the object, you, you can go either way, you can either explore the apparent objectness of the object or the subjectness of the subject. So in this case, we're talking about being one with the tree. So you start with the tree and you recognize all I actually know of this so-called object of the tree is the sight of it, the perception of it. 
in fact, I don't know the perception of it. I imagine that there is something there outside of my perception that I am perceiving. But actually, I've never found that something beyond perception that I am simply, simply happen to be perceiving at this moment. So I can't really say it's a perception of the tree. All I can honestly say is it's a perception. In other words, the of it or the of the tree is added by thought. Yeah. So now we've taken one step closer to our experience. We're not perceiving it. We're not having a perception of the tree. We're just having a perception. We don't know what the perception is of. It's just a perception. So then we take the next step and we ask ourselves, what is this perception made of? A perception is obviously not made of stuff called matter. Yeah. A perception cannot be made of stuff called matter. The, the tree that thought conceptualizes, the of it that thought imagines, that thought says is made of matter. But as we've already realized, we never find that. We just know the current perception. And perception is not made out of matter. It is made out of mind. Yeah, it, the experience of perceiving. Stop calling it perception. Call it perceiving. It's the same thing. Yes? You're outside, walking in nature. You're seeing this tree. Actually, you're just experiencing, you're just knowing the experience of perceiving. Yeah? Not the perceiving of anything. It's just the experience of perceiving. That's the only... If you were to touch the stuff that your current experience was, is made of, let, let's do it now instead of trees, let's say people. If you were to touch the stuff, and we're just dealing with visual perception at the moment, not with hearing and tasting and touching. Mm -hmm. Now, if you were to try, to try to touch the stuff that the experience of perceiving, in this case seeing, is made of, what would you find there? There was to physically touch... There would be the sensation. Oh, to physically touch, no, there would I, be the I, sensation. I, I don't mean physically touch. I mean, I, in your imagination, you, you, you've realized, I thought it was a tree. Now I see it's my perception of the tree. Mm -hmm. Now I realize, no, it's not a perception of a tree. It's just a perception. Now if I look into the perception, the perception is not made out of stuff called matter. Perception is an experience of mind. Yes. It is the experience of perceiving not the perceiving of anything. It's just the experience of perceiving. And so we're taking steps. We're taking little steps. Each te step we take brings us a little more intimately in touch with the reality of our experience. So now this next step is we say to ourselves, what is the stuff that perceiving? When I say, if you were to try to touch it, I don't mean, don't go back to the physical object. I mean, if you were to, in your imagination, you're, you realize now that you are just perceiving, you're just seeing, yes? Okay. All you know of this room is the experience of seeing. Okay. Now, if I were to say to you, in, in your imagination, try to touch. The reason I say touch is because I want it to be very experiential. I don't want you to think about what seeing is made of. I want you to go there with your, with your feeling imagination. So then I, that's why I use this phrase. Um, sometimes I say, reach out an imaginary hand made of pure experiencing or pure knowing. Or you could be, again, this particle of knowing that we were in this morning's meditation and swim around inside the experience of seeing. To try, what is it made of? What is there? Not, be, nothing. Be this, be this particle of it knowing now and swim around inside the experience of seeing. And, and you, you're trying to... You're a very scientific particle of knowing. You're trying to take little samples of the stuff that it's made of. What's it made of? What do you find there? I don't know. I mean, perhaps it's the 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 this word the field. And, I mean, okay, nothing but, but tangible. A, a, a field of a field of what? The the experience of seeing is. 
the experience of seeing is something. Yeah, you can't say there's nothing so there. That, that there's not nothing. Nobody has ever experienced nothing. Nothing is a concept. The mechanism that's I've been playing with has no, been no, no, no. Don't go to mechanisms and play. I, I, you are a particle of knowing. All you can do is experience. What is the experience of seeing made of? As you swim around inside it, it's made of something. Okay. What is that something? I don't know. No, of course you do. You know? Do you not know the experience of seeing? Yeah. Are you not now knowing the experience of seeing? Yes. Well, if you are knowing the experience of seeing, you must know what it's made of. You are experiencing it. You, if I were to say to you, uh, uh, you're watching a movie, and, and I would say to you, what is the movie made of? And, and you say, I don't know. You know. The fact that you are seeing the movie means by definition you are seeing the screen. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Yes. You, you know, you, yes. may not, you may not have a name for it, but you are, if you are experiencing the movie, you are experiencing its reality, the screen. Right. It doesn't matter that you can't name it or see it with your eyes, but by definition, if you are experiencing the movie, which is an illusion, yeah, you must be experiencing its reality, the screen, because they are the same thing. Now, if you are experiencing the experience of seeing, which you are. We are all experiencing seeing. We must, by definition, be experiencing the stuff it is made of. Now, what is that stuff? Light. Well, no, because your only experience of light is seeing. Light is made out of seeing. Seeing is not made out of light. Do you mean physical light? Mm-hmm. Okay, no, you see, your only knowledge of physical light, in fact, you don't know physical light, you just know the experience of seeing. Okay. Yeah, now go, 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 go more closely. It's, seeing is made of something. Well, I mean, I know from, from my experience with you, you use the word awareness. No, I know you know the right answer, but... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, but, but, but I don't... I, I want you to arrive at the right answer. I don't know where to go next. No, but that's good. That, that's very good. Keep going. Keep going. That, 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 that's, that's a very good answer. But it's not quite satisfactory. You, it, it's good. Don't feel that because you don't know, you're failing. No. It's good. You don't know. I'm just trying to push you a little bit further than, than your first answer, which, which was nothing. Or I don't know. So it's fine. Keep going. When you say I don't know, I'm saying, no, you do know. If you tell me you, don't, you can't see what the screen is, if you, it's like when you say, I don't know, it's like saying, I can't see what the movie is made of. What you're telling me you can't see the screen. Can't I'm watching the movie, right. but I can't see the screen. No, if you're watching the movie, you are seeing the screen. Right. Now, if you are experiencing <coughs> seeing, seeing uh-huh. you must be experiencing, you are experiencing what seeing is made of. Because let's say you weren't experiencing what seeing was made of. What would the experience of seeing be? There wouldn't be seeing. Perfect. If, if you were watching the movie, but you weren't seeing the screen... You're not seeing the movie. You couldn't be watching the movie. If you are experiencing seeing, and you are, you are by definition experiencing its absolute reality. Now, you can say, I don't know what that is, only in the sense that you can't give that a name. You can't find it as an object. Right. However, I'm asking you to use words, acknowledging that no word that you use will be absolutely true, because all words describe objects. But I want you to try to use a word. We've reduced something that was very gross, I don't mean gross in a negative sense, I mean gross in a physical substance. sense, something, substance, something that was made out of matter. We've seen, no, I don't experience this stuff made out of matter. I actually experience perception. Then if I come closer, even perception is a little bit too much of an object. You know, you have a perception, like a perception starts here and it fi- finishes here. It's not really a perception, it's more like a process of 
perceiving or seeing. So we've come a little bit closer. We're beginning to, to, to go into the experience. But I want you to go further. What, 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 is, what is seeing made of? I want to reduce it even further. The reason why we know we haven't reduced it all the way back to its ultimate reality is because the experience of seeing can come to an end. Close your eyes. Okay, seeing has ended. Yeah. So that's how we know we haven't gone all the way back to its reality because reality cannot cease. One of the definitions of reality is that it cannot cease to be. So seeing cannot be the ultimate reality of this experience because you close your eyes and seeing has gone. <laughs> Where did it go? Where did the experience of seeing go? It went into its reality. What is that? Keep going, you're on the right track. Try to find a word. Don't worry, every word you, you use and every word I use is not quite right. Try to find a word based on your experience. The, 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 the Vibration. Okay, okay, okay. That's good. What is the vibration made of? It must be made of something. Energy. No, that's a, that's a, that's, now you're going to concepts. Okay. I mean, we're talk everything we say is a concept, but you're going, now you're going into thinking. So you're right, there is something in, in seeing, something is, okay, let's go back. Your answer, vibrating, okay. What is vibrating? If it's vibrating, something. There must be some substance there that is vibrating. What is that? I don't know. So it has to do with the seeing of the eyes open. Hold on, hold on a minute. Let me ask you the same question from a different, from, from a slightly different angle. Go back to the experience of seeing. Ask yourself the question, is there any substance present in seeing other than the knowing of it, the experiencing of it? No, because we've tracked that the substance is a concept. We've tracked? We've tracked that the substance is a concept. <coughs> yes, but go to the experience of seeing. Ask yourself the question, is there anything there other than the knowing of that experience? The experiencing of seeing? Not that I can find. Exactly. Exactly. I got one right. <laughs> okay, but we haven't, we've, we've got further to go still. In just the same way that you understood, first of all, that there's a tree, then we think there's the perception of the tree, and then we realize, no, it's not a perception of the tree. The of the tree is added. It's just a perception. Yeah. Now we do the, the, same, the same understanding. It's not the knowing of seeing. Or let, me, let me just back up a little bit. You see that, you, sorry, you understand that all there is to the experience of seeing is the knowing of it. Now take these two experiences. One, seeing. Just, just be for a moment with the experience of seeing. Yeah? And now be with the experience of knowing seeing. 
Can you find any difference between these two experiences? The experience of seeing and the knowing of seeing. Yeah, the, sense of the knowing is kind of a step back. It, it's a step back. That, that, that's true. It's, it, it, it's one step back. But is there any, is there any substance present in the knowing of seeing other than the knowing itself? It, it, does, does seeing add something to the knowing? Is there a new substance that comes into the knowing? Or is it just made of knowing? I, I think it's just the knowing. Exactly. Exactly. So, seeing is like a... You said it very well. It's a, it's a vibration of knowing. <laughs> it's a colouring of knowing. Mm -hmm. But there's no new... There's no, it's not like um, water and then you bring another, you bring a little bit of water color paint and you add it to the water to, to color it. The, the color doesn't come from outside. The, the only substance present in seeing is this clear knowing. When, when knowing vibrates and assumes the form of seeing, mm -hmm. the no extraneous object is added to it from the outside, yes? Nothing comes in. Nothing is mixed with it. It is just this clear water of pure knowing that, that vibrates and forms a kind of eddy within itself, which in a human mind appears in the form of seeing. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. So, now, go back to your original question about being one with the tree. There's no question of being one with a tree. Because once we have defined the tree, we are already way out there in ignorance again. Yes. Talking about objects made out of matter. That's the Dark Ages. We left that years ago. There's no question of trying to be one. And this is why... This is where so much New Age spirituality goes off on a complete tangent. Because it, there is this deep presumption of the reality of the physical universe. And then we try to unite ourselves with the physical universe through various practices. And we say, I feel one with, with the trees. It, that, that, that's, that's New Age spirituality. It's not. In order... Th Although, as I said to begin with, it, it, it's reasonable to say, I, I am one with everything. But we have to be very careful that, that that's just a clumsy expression. It's not that, that I am one with everything. It's not that consciousness is everything. It's not that consciousness is all. There is no all. That, because all means multiplicity. Mm -hmm. Multiplicity mm -hmm. means diversity. Diversity means form. Form means objects. Objects imply a separate subject. Consciousness is not all, is not everything. There are no things for consciousness to be the all of. There is just consciousness, just this clear water of unmixed consciousness that never gets mixed with anything other than itself. It never gets contaminated. It's only contaminated from the position of thought which is itself one of the temporary modulations of this vibrating consciousness. There are no things for consciousness to be the all of. And because there are no things, we cannot legitimately say, when we trace our way back, to consciousness, that consciousness is nothing, that nothing is there. This is another uh, uh, big um, misconception that you often come across in spiritual teachings, that, uh, that, that reality is nothing or empty. It's only empty uh, or nothing or void in relation to our belief that things are full of stuff called matter, in, rela in relation to the belief that there are things out there, that is, in the relation to the belief that there is something, then it is inevitable that we will conceptualize reality as nothing or empty. 
But reality is only nothing, void or empty, in relation to our previous belief in the reality of things. But why try to define reality in terms of something that is not there? Why try to say rea reality is no thing or empty? We are defining reality using terms that, that, that don't belong to it. If we try to define reality on its own terms, only referring to terms that come from the experience of reality itself, not with reference to something that is not real, such as matter, then what can we say about reality? We cannot say it is nothing. We cannot say it is void. We cannot say it is empty. We truly cannot say anything about it. It is, it is beyond something or nothing. It's not beyond it, it is prior to it. And there we, we uh, arrive at a profound understanding that reality is truly unnameable. But we don't make that statement until we have really discovered that. We don't make that statement superficially. Oh, reality is nothing, it's not a thing, it's empty, it's undefinable, the mind can't go there. We, we, we reserve making that statement until we have really reduced experience back and back and back and back into its origin. And then from that experience, without reference to anything that is not itself, we try to say something that is true about it, and then we fall silence. That is the true silence. The true emptiness beyond emptiness. The emptiness of all emptinesses. But e even that, you see, even that brings us back into comparing with something else. It, it, I should just shut up. 